Well, welcome to the July edition of Let's Get Growing. If you thought it was hot in June, just wait for July. Remember, we're going to mow once a week and continue to do that all summer long, never removing more than one third of the total leaf blade at a time, because if you are, you'll be scalping the lawn. Then you have to water more, fertilize more. It just takes more maintenance. And remember, as the temperatures increase, we're going to raise that mowing height. Several things that we can plant in the landscape, and let's start out with gladiolas, and then we can do zinnias, marigolds, portulaca for a pretty color in the landscape. And then remember, you can do new lawns, but it needs to be from sod, not from seed. Okay, we're gonna hand water only dry spots, annuals, and then keep your azaleas mo moist so that we're gonna have those buds that'll make it through the winter. And then deep water during the hot months, soak, don't sprinkle. And shallow watering is gonna promote shallow roots and that's just gonna make it harder for our plant material to make it through not only the summer, but our winter months coming up. Remember, keep that mulch in all areas. We wanna keep the bare spots covered and all new plantings. You're going to watch for and treat for chinch bugs, red spiders, and they're going to be on all kinds of plant material, and they'll be on the underside of the leaf, and you're going to have to watch closely because sometimes you'll only see the webbing. You can treat those with just a strong stream of water, wash them off, and then if you have to treat, use diatomaceous earth. Now we're gonna to need to fertilize as these temperatures keep rising. Plants are gonna use more nutrients to make it through. So as a rule of thumb, never apply fertilizer to a dry plant or to your dry lawn. We wanna water the day before and then come back the next day and fertilize so that we're not desiccating or killing the root system. Also fertilize your chrysanthemums and if you have the tall varieties, remember to keep them tied to stakes. Also, fertilize your alyssum, petunias, and verbena, and remember to cut those back so that we'll have blooms this fall. Also, in July, let's separate and share our bulbs. Now, we're going to prune out all dead and diseased wood, and we're going to quit pinching our mums so that we can set some buds for fall blooms. We're also going to fertilize those mums starting now every two weeks so we can get those beautiful blooms. Hey guys, don't forget, we need to feed the birds no matter what time of year it is. Well guys, today we're going to learn how to make babies from our bromeliads. This is a bromeliad, and this is actually in the Norgia family, and it holds its bloom down in the cup, and you can see it's already expired. But look, we have all these little babies, which we call pups, coming off the bottom. And these are very easily rooted. You can just take them, and snap them off. And see, we have a nice little stem on it. And I had removed some previously and put them in this little bench. But I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna take this and stick it in the ground, make sure that it's solid. This medium that I'm using is called vermiculite and it's just an expanded clay that holds moisture and makes sure that they're stable and not wiggling around because if a cutting is wiggling, it won't root. Now, as I said, we've taken these and started them in the mist bench, but you can just stick them in a pot at home and they'll do fine. So I wanted to show you, see, they've de developed a nice little root system. And when the root system is about the size of a quarter, or a little bit bigger, then you can take it and pot it up. See these nice little white roots? Now, for a bromeliad, we want to, because they grow in trees, so we're going to mix some potting soil and some pine bark mulch. And we're just gonna mix them together about 50-50. Okay, so as you can see, it's a nice mixture, about 50-50 potting soil and then pine bark mulch. And then we're gonna use this container, it's a six inch container. And this mother is in a six inch container, and so we're just duplicating its environment. We're gonna fill it up to about two thirds full 
take our little baby, put it in, and start adding our soil. And just rotate it and fill. We don't want to um, overfill. We want to make sure that we're leaving a lip when we get finished so that when you water, we've got enough area to hold the moisture that we're putting into the container. And clean it up a little bit. I'm firming the soil. I'm not packing it down very tightly. I'm just making sure that the plant doesn't wiggle. Remember, if it wiggles, it won't root. And now we've made another bromeliad. And this is going to fan out and lay flat, and then our little bloom will come right here in the middle. So we want to water it about once a month, initially water it in really good, and then just as needed. Don't kill it with kindness. These grow in spite of us, not because of us.